that looks like. Oh, the, the meniscus on top? Yeah. Yes! So Do you see that? Yeah, so that's actually the, that's the, because of the hydrogen bonds of the water. So you know when you see drops yeah. of water, droplets form because of that process. Right. And, and, the, and that the meniscus is... This is so... See, those are the words... Bonds, hydrogen bonds in, a, in action. These are the words I want my child to know. Like, I don't want my child to say mom for the first time. I want them to be like, hydrogen bonds! Good morning! Today, we're gonna be meeting Noemi de la Puente. She's an incredible woman who's going to be walking us through water sampling. The goal is that we can understand the water quality of the region over time so that we can understand what's happening to our environment. I've never done this before. I'm really excited. We're gonna have some other volunteers with us today. I believe you can also sign up for this and I will put the resources in the description. So check that out if you wanna be involved. So let's get to it, shall we? The, the official name of the program that Annette and I are in is called the Chemical Action Team. They've got the cats, the bats, which is a biological action team. <laughs> We're the cats, the chemical action team. This whole project is gathering data. The Watershed Institute takes the data, they aggregate the data, they also pass the data along to the DEP. This program started in 1992 because the DEP had like four or five sites that they were sampling and that's just not enough to get a profile of the surface water. And at that time, the Watershed Institute was the Stony Brook Millstone Watershed Association. And they really focused on our little watershed that feeds into the bigger Delaware River watershed. Now they are the Watershed Institute and there are 4,000 sites wow. in this program. Yeah, there are 4,000 sites. So the difference between, you know, uh, what this State can do officially and what we as citizen scientists can do is huge. Although they use Central Jersey as their laboratory, they really do inform policy all over the um, all over the state. Here's where we're going today. 70 Sonaker Drive. This is like a little park and then we walk up to the little Shabakunk Creek and we take our samples. The Shabakunk Creek feeds into the Delaware River. So what happens in the Little Shabakunk Creek does not stay in the Little Shabakunk Creek. This is one of the reasons why we want to be doing these measurements is because stormwater runoff, nobody believes us that mm -hmm. stormwater, all the water that washes off our pavement and mm -hmm. our rooftops and all that, ends up in these little creeks and ends up in the Delaware River. And guess what? The Delaware River is the water source for 17 million people on the East Coast. It's huge, it's huge. It, it supplies New York City, it supplies Trenton, it supplies Reading, Allentown, Philadelphia, Wilmington, it's, um, it's, it's big. So the whole point of this is to document few parameters here. We look at the habitat, we look at temperature, turbidity, which is how much stuff is in the water. Um, we do pH. Uh, we do dissolved oxygen because that is indicative of how healthy the water is for organisms. Can they breathe in that water? Uh, we do nitrate and phosphorus, or phosphate, nitrate and phosphate. Those are nutrients. And again, it's kind of like if you have too much of a good thing, too many nutrients, you can have algal blooms. That's going to diminish the dissolved oxygen in the water. And then you have uh, you, you speed up the aging process for the water body. It's called eutrophication. They fill up with algae, they fill up with plant life, and then they die, the organic matter piles up, and then you have like a meadow. And that's a natural process that takes hundreds or thousands of years, and we speed it up so that it takes 40 years. Um, and that, So that's not good. That's um, why fertilizing your lawn is a bad idea. Washes off your property into the streets and into mm -hmm. the water basin. So this is the kit they give us. We get a, like a three hour course in training and then we're set off in pairs. We go out, we sample, we're committed to a one year. We do it every third weekend of the month. We have to do it between 10 a.m. and noon so that we have standardized temperatures and conditions. And then that way the watershed has a snapshot of what was happening on the third weekend between 10 a.m. and noon all over this watershed. Can anyone sign up? Yes. 
You just have to contact the watershed and look for um, stream watch coordinator. Okay, we are here. And look at this team. Four strong, intelligent women coming together to help the environment. And it's amazing. So I've only done this once before at the at Colonial Lake. So I'm not an expert. Yeah, I've only done this in my kitchen. <laughs> the reason this riprap is here. Um, riprap, they don't know what riprap means. Like, I'm not sure if this is officially riprap, <laughs> but it's like riparian boundary stones mm -hmm. and with a mm -hmm. mesh because there's a stormwater uh, pipe right here. Got it. Mm -hmm. And so a lot, and a lot of water comes here, so mm -hmm. this just helps with the erosion. Right. Mm -hmm. right, pipe is right here. Okay. So all the water from that street is coming in yeah. here. All right, so we're gonna fill this with river water. Okay. And then this one I'm gonna fill with clear water and we're gonna compare. Ah, for your mm. control. And so because turbidity has to do with, it's like a visual measurement, they have that little dot at the bottom. Mm -hmm. What we do is we, we keep adding the reagent until we get equivalent haze in this clean tube as in the river tube. You get water, dump it out three times. Okay. And then you have your sample. Okay. okay Why so do you have to dump it out three times? It's to um, clean it out. So okay. it's kind of part of the scientific method. Rinse out three times. Oh, okay. I can feel how refreshing this water is. <laughs> I know. It feels so good. And you always do it upstream so you're not catching the sediment that you're creating. Yeah. How do you know this is a... I was just going to ask that. Oh, oh, just in front of In front of you. Because if you've walked yeah. there, you've just... Yeah, no, you're just like right, yeah, right, right there. There you go. Not behind you, in front of you. Because if you do it behind you, you've stepped. You see how the mud has shifted up? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So if you do it in front, it's nice and clear. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bubble, bubble. Okay, so one. Mm -hmm. Two. I love the sound of bubbles. Three. Okay. Bubble, bubble. We got our sample. Yay. And the boots are holding. These boots are getting wet. <laughs> That's just practice. Okay. The same thing with. Um, That's a focus space. They have larger pipettes where they have like a <laughs> wheel, and mm -hmm. what it does is you pull up. It's less than five, right? Because this the is turbidity is less. So than if you five. look, you can see that's cloudier than this. It sure is, which is a good thing. That. And this is the poison bottle. That's right. That's you why I do not drink. <laughs> so you're gonna put every single sample that has yep. chemicals in it, and mm -hmm. then that's brought back to the lab. Yeah, and river water can just. Oh, what is this? Because what it does is it blocks out. It blocks out the um, uh, all the other the things glare. that I'm seeing yeah. behind it. Oh. Yeah, I think it's, it's still seven point five, which is great. Which is a great pH. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a healthy pH. You don't want to be too acidic. You don't want to be too basic. Dissolve the oxygen. Okay, this is the tricky one. Uh -oh. You can't get air in the little shoulder of the bottle. Because oxygen is so movable in the water, you have to fix it. And you fix it by pouring in a series of chemicals that basically bind with the oxygen, and then you can back calculate how much oxygen there was by how much of that bound chemical there was. So this is eight drops of alkaline potassium iodide and eight drops of manganese manganese sulfate yes. solution. So I'm gonna do them really quick because oxygen is really touchy.
Okay, so I'm waiting for this precipitate mm -hmm. to drop below the shoulders of the bottle. I'm gonna wait just a little bit longer for it to really drop. Mm -hmm. And while I'm letting that kind of cook, I'm gonna fill my nitrogen and phosphorus uh, tubes, or phosphate, I keep calling it phosphorus. Mm -hmm. Now we read the result with the phosphate. Mm. 0.2 parts per million. That's good, it's on the lower end of the scale. Yeah, mm. yeah. Nitrate is still cooking. Mm. Um, it's a really pretty color. Yeah, it is, it is, but that's unfortunate because- oh, we don't want that? <laughs> we don't want any color. So we're dissolved, oxygen has okay. two has two chapters. Chapter one is fixing it, which we just did. Okay. Chapter two is titrating it and it's based on the titration, the, uh, what you record as your, um, as your measurement. What ends up happening is you end up titrating with this, mm -hmm. you go very, very, very slowly, and then at the end, you write down this value, how much you... Um, right, how many mils. How many mm -hmm. mils did you yeah. put in there? And that translates into how many um, milligrams or parts per million of the dissolved oxygen are in the water. Seven point two is the dissolved oxygen on number one. Mm. Right, so this is the second, second bottle. bottle. And depending on this measurement, if it's similar to the first one, we don't have to do a third. If it's very different, then we do a third one to figure out average. Okay, as it gets brighter, it matches your pin. Or brooch? Yeah. 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 Excellent. I can see that. It's <laughs> water sampling is all about how you accessorize. <laughs> Accessories and footwear. Who said yeah. scientists could not be fashionable? That's right. <laughs> the thing about titration is you reach that tipping point very quickly. Oh, oh wow. Okay. Goodbye, Dementor. Magic. <laughs> Two, four, six point four. We're out of our limit, so we have to do it again. <laughs> A drum roll, please. Oh my God, 6.2. Okay, well it jives 6 with 6.4, so you're gonna take yeah. the average of 6.4 and 6.2, which is 6. .4. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So we look like. No, that's about it. One. Uh, it, it looks higher than one. Yeah. It looks like greater than one. It does. It's it does. Yeah. So if it's greater than one, it means it's above what we want it to be. And that's probably from all the fertilizer from the yeah. surrounding area. Yeah. Really? There's mm. nothing like a golf course. Mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> Great. It really raise the fertilizer rates in the area. So we discovered something interesting here. We have a nitrate problem. Uh, normally, we would want the measurement to be below one. However, we got up to four. We're talking about maybe the golf course having some effect on the nitrate in the stream. It could also be farms in the area. But ultimately, now from this, we can point out it might not be the most accurate measurement, but we know there's a problem. Now we can take action and figure out where it's coming from, what's the source, and what are the potential um, actions that can be taken to reduce that over time. Oh, Noemi, the, who do you give that information to now? Now we turn it into the watershed. And, uh, then uh, they collect the data, they share it with the DEP, they, sh they map it, and we add to the body of knowledge. Well, that's why we're here, right? If the DEP can't do it, these ladies can! <laughs> So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, of course, go like and subscribe. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Goodbye. <laughs>